Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders you've heard of, you know, some you've never heard of. You know, Jonathan, I like hearing about some of the low point, like challenging stories. So I had, you know, P90X founder, Tony Horton, talked to him. You know, he's obviously made hundreds of millions of dollars, sold hundreds of millions of dollars with P90X, but he talks about, he was a street mime. He made money with, for his food and rent money um, by putting his hat on the street and doing street mime, like street performing, actually. Um, and uh, Baby Einstein founder, Julie Clark, she grew her company $20 million with five employees, ended up selling to Disney, but she beat cancer twice in some of the crazy kind of low points and, and challenges she had. Uh, Atari founder, Nolan Bushnell, um, he was Steve Jobs' mentor, and Steve offered Nolan 33% of Apple for $50,000, and why he said no. And um, there's many more amazing stories on inspiredinsider.com. So check them out. Um, this episode is brought to you by Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. And you know, Rise25, I was telling Jonathan about this. He's like, what do you actually do? Uh, well, we help uh, B2B businesses connect to their Dream 100 clients and referral partners and help you run your podcast so it generates ROI. You know, um, it's been the best thing I've done for my business and my life. I've gone to people's weddings. I've gone on family vacations. When Jonathan comes to Chicago, I'm sure we'll go to dinner, hopefully. Um, and, but we're, you know, it's a lot more personal for me. It's um, not just about business. It's about, I consider it helping my guests and me leave a legacy. And I was inspired to start by my grandfather who was a Holocaust survivor. And him and his brother were in concentration camps in Nazi Germany, and they were the only members of their family to survive. And his words and legacy live on. He's not alive anymore. But if you go to my about page on Inspired Insider, you could see a video, full video, um, of when the Holocaust Foundation interviewed him. Um, and his legacy lives on because of that interview. Um, and so it really inspires me. Obviously, I, you know, I think every business should have a podcast, period. But... Um, it also will help you leave a legacy. And so if you have questions, you can go to rise25.com or support at rise25media.com. So I want to introduce today's guest. Before I do, I want to give a big thank you to Chris Dreyer. Um, he's founder of rankings.io. He helps elite personal injury law firms dominate first page rankings. He was like, you need to have Jonathan on. You need to have Client Boost on. They're an amazing company. So thank you, Chris, for that. And um, He's exactly right after doing a lot of research. And also, two people I respect in the agency world, Ian Garlic, who runs Story Crews, and Jason Swank, who you know, helps top agencies grow. So we have Jonathan Dane. Uh, he's a founder of Client Boost. And so you can look up online. It's K-L-I-E-N-T Boost. And they're a hybrid PPC CRO agency that's grown from zero to eight figures in, in just the past few years. Um, and what they do is they are creative pay-per-click and paid social and landing page conversion rate optimization agency. Basically, they help you make money. You know, they're focused on profit. So um, they have over 200 active clients. So if you're a SaaS company, e-commerce company, a lead generation company, and you want more clients, call them. Um, now, the funny thing is, some people don't know this, some people do, um, but they actually do content marketing, technical SEO, and conversational marketing, meaning probably everything it takes to set up chatbots and actually lead people into that sale. Because probably their clients are like, hey, you're driving a lot of clients, we need more conversion, what are the other steps of conversion? I imagine, Jonathan, you correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. And then they started doing that for people too, because that helps complete the sale. Um, and they basically focus on beautiful, high converting user experiences. Fun fact is he grew up in Denmark and played professional basketball. So Jonathan, thanks for joining me. <laughs> Thank you, man. That intro, I feel such like a little tiny peanut compared to the names that you uh, have had on the show. I'm grateful. Thank You're you. You're amazing. I always ask since this inspired insider, what's been a low moment that you had to push through? What's been a challenging time? And then what's been a high proud moment? But before those two, I want to hear from your basketball career, <laughs> what was like your favorite 
game of all time or something that you think back on as, because I, I just remember you telling the story of like you would just dribble in your room for like hours. I don't know. How tall oh, are you? I'm, I'm 6'1". So you're 6'1". So like yeah. you played professional basketball overseas and um, so you must be able to dunk or do something crazy at 6'1". I can shoot really well. Shoot That's really well. Tough. Okay. Yeah. I so, could dunk once. So maybe your your game, like when you go to bed, your your head hits a pillow, and that's like the <laughs> game you think of. That. So the coolest experience was. Um, so I had actually gotten in a fight with my dad. I was I was in high school over here in the U.S., and he sent me back home to my mom in Denmark. And everywhere in the U.S., you can pretty like go anywhere to play a, a pickup basketball game pretty easily. In Denmark, it's like it's soccer first, then it's handball, and then it's like probably not even basketball yet at that time, but it's only like very seasonal. So you can only do it during winter or something like that. So I had a, my first job was being a receptionist in a fitness center, which I thought was like, that's going to be a very good use of me being productive, right? I can work out and I can make some money, which I actually didn't make any money. I only got, <laughs> I got a free membership from doing that. So they had like an aerobics studio and there was again, no basketball hoop, but they had this Reebok medicine ball that was rubbery and bouncy where your normal medicine balls are just like, you know, you drop them and it's a large, like a loud thump and like, that's it. And so I just was dribbling like crazy and my forearm muscles were getting pretty ripped. And, and so I was getting really good at dribbling that summer. So I came back to Denmark in February that summer. Um, the, 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 the Danish championship team was holding a basketball camp. I signed up, joined, I forgot a blow up mattress. I didn't sleep on anything but my clothes scattered on like the cold cement floor. And so for a good week, I just slept on that only like my clothes, which wasn't a lot. And then go out to play like what seemed like six hours a day and then go back to sleep and all that kind of stuff. I won MVP of the, of the camp. I got asked to join the team. They gave me um, like a place to stay in the city and all that kind of stuff and comp me for travel. I physically never got, paid money. I got comped, which would still be NCAA rule breaking. So that's why I call myself professional. And it was also the professional league, but to get to your, to get, to get to your question, because they had won the Danish championship, they got invited to EuroLeague. And in the preseason, um, you go to like basically, uh, drive down to teams again in uh, Germany or, um, what was it, Croatia and things like that. And like, Kids in Croatia, 18 years old, average height, six, seven. It's just like farm teams down there. It's wild. Tony, my, coach from the Bulls, yeah. <laughs> yeah. My favorite thing was talking to these other American players who were on these teams that we're playing against that were like bench players for USC or like massively, you know, successful college programs. And I was like, this is wild. And, I, and again, I wasn't a starter or anything like that. I came off the bench, but I got decent playing time. That was just the experience to say that you've done that was incredible. And I actually came to the U S get this wanting to be a Marine biologist and play basketball. And, wow. and the basketball thing didn't work and I hated chemistry. So I stopped Marine biology and I found marketing. Were you just a lights out shooter? How did you win the MVP? Um, I guess I guess the competition wasn't that great when I look back at it, but I was, I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a decently good shooter. I can't okay. obviously, you know, be too cocky, but I'm All pretty right. good. All right. Well, Chicago dinner and then horse <laughs> is like the agenda. Um, you could probably beat me. We'll see. Um, <laughs> so low moment, challenging time and proud moment. What were, um, so I, people ask me what my motivation is today. And I think I, so I've, I go to therapy uh, pretty regularly. I, it's such a help. It's amazing. Um, with my, my wife, wife is a help. psychologist, by the way. Yeah. So is she, okay. Awesome. Yeah. And she'll give me a high five. Um, yeah. normalizing therapy, I think is going to happen very, very soon. It's amazing. But what we basically found out was, so my dad sent me home. Um, my mom kicked me out again, it sounds really bad. And I wasn't growing up in the hood or the ghetto or anything like that. It's all relative, right? To like your own circumstances. Then I came back over to the U S and I wasn't on terms with my dad yet, but I was with my grandma, his own mom. And she kicked me out. <laughs> and it, 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 these are reasons that are like, wow, it was like, I was like a problem kid. You seem like I, such a nice guy. Was everyone I, so let me, let me give you the reasons. So yeah. my dad, um, 
I was, I got a girlfriend in high school. I started losing focus on basketball. I started losing focus on, um, school and like my grades were dropping and all that kind of stuff. And we got in a fight and I was like, dad, why don't you just send me home? And he was like, cool. He printed out a British Airways itinerary that day, got me to the airport and like sent me off. My mom had, cause I lived so many years in the U S had basically, um, you know, continued her own life, got a boyfriend at the time, moved in together. They moved to another part of Denmark, which is called Jutland, which is like, the South, you know, in the U S equivalent. And I just didn't get along with the boyfriend. Um, it was more him being threatened by me. I was actually pretty chill, but I was 18 at the time. And my mom was like, can you get, you know, your own place? And I was like, sure. I did. I got stress induced asthma, like literally couldn't reach an apex of my breath, like the, the peak of it. And that's like the most frustrating. Imagine taking a deep breath and not being able to like, I've experienced it like a couple of, it's so frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. So that happened. Um, how to, how to get my first job and all that kind of stuff too, which sounds easy, but it's not easy when both your parents are not there to really support you. And then my grandma kicked me out because I didn't uh, change the light bulb in my own bathroom fast enough. And I had a dent, a tiny little dent in the bumper that I didn't get fixed fast enough either. She just decided to send me out. So my point is, is that I had people who have control in my life to pull the rug out from underneath me that since then, this is now, so that's my down part. My highlight is that since then I've been so focused on making my rug as heavy as possible financially that I have this drive that I have today because I had this fear in the back of my mind that somebody can just yank it out. Um, so I took my bad things and turned them into good things, which I'm really thankful for. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. It's a lot of times I find that hard charging, really motivated people, there's some pain that's driving them. Or fear yeah. that they don't want to or realize. Fear, fear and pain. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, thank you again, Jonathan. People check out clientboost.com and, um, you know, everything that you're doing. I really appreciate uh, your time and knowledge. Thank you, my man. So, it was so fun being on here. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same right now. I'm feeling like a hundred grand